Um, I was reading this article and I sent it to Ben about children being medicated. Uh, and I took Adderall briefly when I was a, a youngster in um, uh, eighth grade. And it just, you know, I don't know. I just got a dry mouth. It didn't really work. I mean, I, I got a little speedy. But, you know, the grades didn't go up. So I think my parents were like, okay, let's not do it anymore. Um, but this is interesting. This teen was, pre- and by the way, I think people need medic- medication. So don't, this isn't one of those things where I say no one needs medication. I think certain people need to be on their medication. I have them in my family and I know. But there is, you know, this teen here was prescribed 10 psychiatric drugs. Uh, she's not alone. One morning in the fall of 2017, Renee Smith, a high school freshman on Long Island, New York. Uh-huh, interesting. Could not get out of bed, overwhelmed by the prospect of going to school. In the following days, her anxiety mounted into despair. I should have been happy. She laid a rope, but I cried, screamed, begged. The universe or whatever godly power to take away the pain of a thousand men that was trapped inside my head. Intervention for her depression and anxiety came not from the divine, but from the pharmaceutical industry. The following spring, a psychiatrist pres- prescribed Prozac, the medication uh, we all associate with, you know, depression. Um, however, she kept taking it. The effect dissipated. She was uh, prescribed an additional antidepressant effects her. Um, during 2021, the year she graduated, she was prescribed seven drugs. These included one for seizures and migraines, which neither, she didn't have any of either one of those. But the drug can also be used to stabilize mood and another to dull the side effects of the other medications, although it's mainly used for schizophrenia. She felt better on some days and deeply sad on others. Her senior yearbook photo shows her smiling broadly, quote, but I feel terrible that day, said Miss Smith, who is now 19 and attends a local community college. I've gotten good at wearing a mask. Um... She had come to exemplify medical practice common among her generation, the simultaneous use of multiple heavy-duty psychiatric drugs. Psychiatrists and other clinicians emphasize that psychiatric drugs properly prescribed can be vital in stabilizing adolescents and saving the lives of suicidal teens, but these experts caution such medications are too readily doled out often as an easy alternative to therapy that families cannot afford or find. So that's an interesting... That's really an interesting thing. People, do we have better help this week? I don't think we do, actually. Would have been nice. Well, anyway, for a waste, people can't get therapy and they can't afford it. And and the doctors are just cramming pills down the throats of the, you know, a lot of people... Every now and then you'll meet a kid that you, it needs to be immediately drugged and you can tell. And I've, you know, I have mm-hmm. friends with children where the child is like, hi, 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 And you go, lock it in a cage. <laughs> you go, put the drugs in it and lock it in a cage. Because some people have kids that have, that have uh, problems. You see? Big problems. Okay, like my, my, you know, one of my friend's kids, like he was on his tippy toes a lot. He would just, you ever meet a kid like that? They're on their tippy toes and they're going like this and I'm like, and you go, all right, that's, that's not going to get solved by a, a catch in the front yard, right? Catch isn't going to help that, like throwing a ball. That's not going to help that. I didn't even know what it was, but on their tippy toes. And then they would go like this and go, so. In those rare instances, when it's not going to be solved with a game of catch or some wheat bread, it's not solved with taking away some ice cream. It's a real problem. You got to sedate the children, drug them up, put the drugs in them and put them in the cage because they're a problem. Hyperactive. I don't know, but you you meet them every now and then. You're you're at a party. It's a nice barbecue, and then you know it's like the, the the it's the running of the bulls. The barn door opens, and out comes like, oh my god, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I don't know how it happened or what happened, <laughs> but the kid's a fucking lunatic. And you go, if this kid's not medicated, they will kill somebody or themselves. They'll burn something down. They're a liability. Some kids are a liability and they need to be drugged because they're fucking nuts. And I'm not a doctor and that's not the clinical term, but that's what happens. You've seen some of these kids, right? 
Yeah, I mean, they, they have hard times understanding what reality is. You explain right. to them that Roblox isn't real. It's not real life. They're like, what do you mean? But I'm in the game. My friends are and in the game. That's everybody. Yeah. My point is when they're actually, it's not, that's not what I mean. What I mean is not a kid who's quietly playing a video game who thinks it's real. That's fine. Think it's real. Just shut up. My point is a kid who's like, yeah, you want to meet my dog? 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 You want to meet my... You know what I mean? Just where it's like, where it's like, okay, okay, I'll meet your dog later. I'll meet your dog later. I've already met your dog. I've already met... Get the fuck away! <laughs> those people need to be drugged. Mm. Some of those kids. Because some of those kids have severe, 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 severe issues. Mm. But then there are those other kids in school, and you know the kids who are like, they're sad. They're like, I'm sad. And it's... I don't want it anymore. Like, I just don't want it anymore. I'm so sad. And that's very sad. So maybe you give him a little pill. You give him a little blue pill and you go, take a walk around the track. Every town mm. has a little track that no one uses. You to take a walk around the track and you have to take a little pill. Here's a little pill. Here's a little pill. You're a little overdramatic. But you can't give them like 13 types of medication. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. If you're really problem, like if you really have an issue where it's like, you're like, I just, and I'm not even, I'm not trying to make light of these things because people have, mm -hmm. they have genuine issues with depression, anxiety. My mother is a schizophrenic. I call it schizophrenic <laughs> because she's locked up now. So it's just fun. She doesn't really bother anyone. Key, please. Um, but I get it. I've had anxiety my, myself. I have problems myself. So much of this is about, it's case by case. You yeah, know yeah, what I sure. mean? So there's people that are severely anxious and depressed that need medication to function in life. And then there are people who are having situational depression who with cognitive behavioral therapy, they can improve their lives greatly. That includes changes in diet. That includes maybe exercise that includes uh, moderation of drugs and or alcohol, even in marijuana, the, which everybody loves can exacerbate underlying mental health issues. This is a fact, right? So not everybody is a well-adjusted person. There's a lot of people. I'm nuts and everyone I know is nuts. Now we're talented, you know, but I'm telling you this, I know a lot of people that are need to be on medication and I'm not saying that medication is not good, but I'm also saying we are an over medicated country because there are certain, like sometimes I will eat something I shouldn't eat. If I eat like a big ice cream sundae, I feel happy. I go, Oh, I like it. It feels good. But then you, then you get tired. You go, oh, I'm sad now because the sugar high is over. The high of the sugar is over, the insulin crash comes, and then you're just like, oh, I didn't, I, why did I do it? And then you're disgusted with yourself. And you're like, I've been bad, I've been bad. And you get upset and these negative feelings. And listen, that can happen with booze, it mm -hmm. can happen with food, it can happen with any of these things, right? It can happen with laziness and sloth. If you don't do it, you don't want to accomplish the things you're doing you then get disgusted and it becomes this negative feedback loop where you're like, I'm a piece of shit. Those are more situational things mm. that can be helped by lifestyle changes and maybe some light medication, tiny pill, walk around the track, walk around at seven 30 at night, have a Jasmine tea, get in your bed, nut. get in your bed and don't be a nut. Now, there's some people that have deeper problems than that, where it's very bad. I had a friend named Andrea. You know already it's going to be bad. You know already it's going to be bad. I liked Andrea a lot. She was a witch, a modern witch, a Wiccan, very mortal. And I liked Andrea a lot. She was fun. She was sick. When I was a young person, she was part of my group. My group included skaters, stoners, goths, and uh, drug dealers. Um, I guess they were jocks. I mean, some of them were, you know, they were, it's not like they weren't being drafted, but they, some of them were, 
you know, able-bodied for sure, physical, you know, they would fight people and, you know, brandish weapons when, when you know, when need be. Uh, but it, we, we had a big tent because drugs, and that's the beautiful things about drugs, that's why I recommend them, is that it is a great big tent. So you would have, and, and she was a lovely goth girl, and she had a big um, um, knife that she would cut herself with. Not always. Not always. Not in front of you. You understand what I'm saying? She was a witch. She wore all black, which I like. I still like that. I still like that. She was a witch, and she cut herself with a big knife. And she had a lot of weed, and we all smoked weed with her. And when she was happy, when a depressed person is happy, it's so beautiful because they're not usually happy. She was manic. I believe she was manic depressive. And she would be so, and we would laugh. I mean, she was fun. There were times when we would just sit there in the back of the library because no one ever went in Long Island to the libraries. And many people use drugs there in the back of them because no one goes to them. And, and the people that work there don't really pay attention because no one goes to the light unless you're like, well, like an older, like a guy like my uncle who like goes in and he's like, I want a book on Ulysses S. Grant. And it's like, hey, shut up. But, you know, like he'll go in and get a book on Ulysses S. Grant and then go, go into the back room of his house and drink. Um, and but we'd be sitting in the back of the library, me, her and my friend. And we would smoke pot and just start laughing so hard. Nobody even said anything. Nobody even said anything, but it was just the, the fun, the humanity. And I believe she was, she was in many mental institutions like over and over again. I think she's dead now. I think she's dead, but I don't, here's the thing. I don't know. She might be alive. She was a witch and she had a big knife. My point is that there are people out there with problems. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's dead or not. If she's not dead, don't DM me. I don't, I don't play that game anymore. I, you know, I've moved on. But the point is what I am saying, and it's, it's, it's hard to make this coherent, but I think the people out here that are, that are really connecting with it are understanding what I mean. What I mean is that this person had problems but was a beautiful person that I believe, I believe now is dead, but I don't know. I don't know if she's dead or not, but fun times, somebody would just giggle like a, like a, like a hyena. She would cackle like a mad woman and then run off with her knife into the night. These are the memories that if you if you're not making the memories but i think she's dead my point is that you have to be careful with this medication because had we medicated her earlier on those beautiful moments that we experienced i don't know you know maybe they wouldn't have been uh, wouldn't have been around I, I hate to sound selfish about it, but she was a fun person. We met her like twice, two or three times. <laughs> but but you, when you're on drugs and you hang out with somebody, back then, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, when you hung out with somebody, it was like all day, all night. People used to go out at 11 a.m. and get back at 5 a.m. All day, all night, there were different drugs for different hours. The golden, there was always nice weed in the golden hour, the gloaming, the, the sunset, and then the coke was at night. But I mean, you know, like, and, or the hallucinogens or whatever you were doing that night. But, you know, I was in the grocery store a few, uh, a few minutes ago and the guy was talking to his, his girlfriend. And he's like, yeah, they're all from the Bay Area. They're really into hallucinogens. They're like super smart guys. I'm hanging out with them this weekend. They always get into something fucking crazy. And I'm like, the whole state's just drug addicts. The entire state is people that are just in some form of like psychosis. It's crazy. They're really smart guys from the Bay Area. They're like super into hallucinogens. I'm hanging out with them this weekend. They always get into something. 
And she was like, yeah. She goes, I only go out on Friday and Saturday nights. And he goes, that's really like respectable. That's like a California conversation. That's really respectable. You do. I only go out on Friday and Saturday nights. That's really respectable. They're from the Bay Area. They're very hallucinogens. Yeah. 